Hey fellow YouTube viewers, today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial how to set up an eGPU system with an HP Spectre laptop. Now I've seen a lot of things online saying that it can't work, it won't work, you know there's problems doing it through a Thunderbolt connection but I got it to work and I'll prove it to you. I'll be showing you the components, it takes three components, a power supply, a graphics adapter box, and a graphics card itself. I will also be showing you a benchmark program that shows the frame rates and performances of your graphics card after it's connected just to prove to you that it works. So let's get started. So first off, I want to show the three components that I used to get my eGPU system to work with my Spectre. Um, first and foremost, I have an Akidio Thunder 3 PCIe box. Um, which is an external graphics adapter that lets you plug a graphics card in and connect it to your laptop via Thunderbolt. See? In the back there. And it also comes with a display port. Um, my second component is an EVGA GeForce GTX 950. Now, it's important to note, and I'll have this in the description below, but you're going to have to get a graphics card that is half length, full height, and it can be up to double width. Now this one fits just perfect. Um, and the only thing is, is once you install this into your Thunderbolt 3 box, you won't be able to put the sleeve back on because of the next component I'm going to show you. Now, for the power supply, I got a 430-watt EVGA uh, power supply box here, which will plug into our graphics card via 6-pin connection. Okay, let's start with our setup here. Um, first important thing to note, that if you want your power supply to actually power your graphics card, you're going to need to close the circuit on the main motherboard power output from your power supply. And this is because if it doesn't sense that a motherboard is attached, it won't even turn on and supply your graphics card. So how I did that is I just took a, as you can see, paper clip and plugged it into two slots right next to each other. And the two slots you want to plug it into are the green wire, which there's only one green wire, and the black wire directly to the left of it. And that will effectively close your loop and allow you to supply power to your graphics card. Now, after you've closed your circuit on your motherboard switch, the next step you want to do is obviously remove your graphics card from the packaging take your protective slip off and then to open your PCI box there are two thumb screws in the back here where you just unscrew like so and then the cover just slides off here as you can see there's your inside of your box. Now, how you install your graphics card is there are two screws here and here. And you're going to have to remove both of those before you can do anything else. Now, like I said, we can't put this back on, so this, we're actually going to get out of the way. And the reason you can't put that back on is because of the 6-pin power connector that will plug into your graphics adapter. Okay, I've got my two screws removed. Now you'll see that this plate right here will actually just freely come out. I didn't put mine back in. It's not a necessity. But then you take your graphics card and you're going to want to slide it in like so to where it will plug in 
see where it plugged in down there? And you have to press pretty hard and you'll hear a click. And once you've done that, you want to put those two screws back in to lock it in place. Now, after you got your graphics card installed into your box, you're going to want to make sure everything's plugged in. You want to make sure your power supply is plugged in directly to the wall. You want to make sure the power supply to this box, your PCI box, is also plugged directly into the wall. And the way that you power your graphics card is through a six pin connector that you see right there. Now depending on the graphics card that you purchase, as long as it's compatible with this, I don't know where that port's going to be, um, but for the GTX 950, it's at the top there. So I'm going to show you which one to plug in. Now, if you look on your power supply, there's actually one that says uh, PCIe. And as, as you can see, it's got the six pin right there that you're going to connect in. So you're going to go ahead and connect that. And then you also want to plug in your box here with your DC plug-in. And that just plugs in right at the bottom corner there. So here is the Thunderbolt 3 cord that comes with your graphics adapter. And you're going to want to plug that in the back of the Spectre here. And then plug it in to your graphics adapter box. And when you do that, make sure our power supply is turned on there. You should see a blue light come on. You definitely want that to happen. If not, that either means that you have a bad connection to your laptop or that you're not getting power from your power supply. Our setup is now complete. I'm gonna go ahead and open my laptop here and show you the necessary steps that you have to take to enable this. Okay, so once you've plugged in your graphics adapter box to your PC uh, via Thunderbolt, you'll get a notification right in this bottom corner that will ask you if you want to allow the Thunderbolt PCI box to communicate with your laptop. You're going to want to go ahead and say always. And then after that, what you're going to want to do is you want to go into Device Manager here. And you want to go to Display Adapters. Now, at first, this will not say NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950. This will say Windows Basic Graphics Adapter. And all you have to do is right click in Update Driver Software. Search automatically for updated driver software. It'll do that. It'll ask you to restart your computer. Then you need to go on NVIDIA's website, and I'll post a link down below and download the GeForce Experience, which what this does is it senses what uh, graphics card you use and it allows you to download the latest drivers for your graphics card automatically. Um, and as you can see release date December 4th 2016 game ready driver down downloaded working fine. And after you have that done you're going to want to go ahead and restart your computer and it should be working. So now I will show you a benchmark program that will shows the performance of the graphics card and showing that it works. So what you're seeing right now is the intro to the benchmark program that I'm running called Skydiver. Um, it runs through a program called 3D Mark which benchmarks your GPU's performance um, in terms of graphics, in terms of how it handles physics, frame rate and whatnot. So just to show you that this is running on my HP Spectre and after the test is completed it will even show you the name of the graphics card um, that the program is running through. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit here just to get past this intro so we can get to the actual 
clocking here, so. Okay, so here we go for graphics test one. Uh, the intro is cool, but serves really no purpose in benchmarking your system. Um, so here we go. Frame rate starting at around 75, which isn't bad. The first time I ran this, it was in the mid-80s, low 90s. So this is a little bit of a drop, but nothing bad. Um, it peaked at 80 there, so it seems to be running around mid 70s, which is pretty good. Um, so that's the first graphics test. It has a series of tests that it does. This is the second one. Turn the brightness down a little bit so you can see the text. Um, So here we go, running at around 70 frames again, mid-70s, which isn't bad. And it, it looks good, it has good depth of color, um, smooth lighting, obviously you can't tell through my phone, but I really wanted to film this through my phone to show that it is running on this laptop that I'm not just doing it on another system screen capturing it and claiming that it works this is just a way for me to prove that it is done via an external graphics port here which you see running connected via Thunderbolt 3 and this is the physics test which has the lowest of all frame rates and what it does is it just keeps compounding the image till it drops out of frames so there you see it dip down to 20 that's a stress test and then this is a combined test showing physics and graphics at the same time in the same scene so I believe this will run around high 30s, which is pretty good. Like I said, this benchmark program is made for upper level gaming laptops and mid level gaming PCs. Um, this graphics card was around 300 bucks, so it's not the most expensive out there, but you know, it, it's it gets the job done. It's better than the integrated graphics that comes with your system. So as you can see, we're running around. 35 frames and that's it and then it'll give you a little score so 9,813 and let's compare that online so we can see what our score looks like here and see it even says NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950 um, it has your processor um, and so yeah it's like mid-range you know it's not top of the line but it's definitely better than your base notebook HD graphics I mean it's even better than 2013 gaming laptops I don't know if that's anything to brag about but there you have it on an HP Spectre we have external graphics that work if you have any questions, leave the comments below.